Hi, ah, it's Monday, June 6th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through the book of Exodus. And today it's Exodus chapter 19, verses 9 to 14. Um, and to get to this point, well, the Israelites are in the wilderness of Sinai, right? They've been moving through the wilderness, the wilderness of sin, other wilderness, wilderness of Sinai now. So now they are where Moses actually encountered God in a burning bush, if you think back to those good old days. Um, and uh, in, in that same place, now God has told the people through Moses that they are treasured and that they are chosen, chosen to be uh, sort of a priestly people in the world. Um, and, and they reply that they will follow God's rules and instructions. No question. Of course they will. Uh, <laughs> track record doesn't suggest that. But nevertheless, no, they have said, the elders have said in unison, absolutely, um, they, will, they, they will follow God's lead. Um, and then God tells Moses, okay, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to appear in a thick cloud so that the people can hear me speak with you. This is a good way of giving Moses authority. So people, you know, don't think that ah, Moses is just making this stuff up. Um, so that's where we are. Okay. So the people said, yep, they're going to follow. God has said, I am going to make an appearance as it were. And, uh, and here we go. Exodus 19, nine to 14. When Moses had to told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of the people. You shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Be careful, do not, careful not to go up the mountain or to touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch them but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there because it's a good place to stop, but also because... Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. Um, yeah, women don't seem to get much of a fair shake um, in, uh, in in Holy Scripture. Uh, boy, that's a shock. I know, you never heard that before. Um, see, the thing is that nowhere else, actually, uh, in the Hebrew Scriptures, you can go through them all, do they say, do they suggest that... Um, uh, intimate relationships um, are somehow unclean or make you unworthy of going near God. Um, it really doesn't. But here it says, do not go near a woman. Um, do not go near your wife. Do not basically, I mean, I, I'm assuming it, it, it's it's it, it's uh, sex, but it might just be some any kind of intimacy. Just keep yourselves separate. And is that because being separate is desirable? It's the better way to be? Is that because um, women are temptresses and, um, and they cause the falling of men? Uh, we've heard things interpreted that way. We absolutely have. But as I said, that is not consistent with Hebrew scripture. And this is a special event, a special day, right? They're also washing their clothes, I think it's a good idea to wash your clothes, absolutely. But is it a good idea to wash your clothes twice a day? Um, is it okay to wash your clothes once in a while? Um, I mean, I think everything in balance, right? Uh, I mean, if you have jeans, apparently you're never supposed to wash those. Um, at least that's what I was told once. You're never supposed to wash denim jeans. Um, anyway, there is a balance to life. But this is a special day. So it would seem to me that in this situation, the idea of washing our clothes, being consecrated by Moses, all of that is a way of saying, um, make a special effort. And um, so, like we used to dress up for church, uh, we can discuss that another day too, but the idea of, you know, it, it's, it's a holy day, so we dress up for church. My grandfather would always wear a tie, of course, and a, and, 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 and a vest. Um so we dress up for church. This is yes, you're 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 about to be in the presence of God. So so dress up, um, you know, have your clothes clean. But I don't think that do not go near a woman isn't more is more clean. I think it's 
make a sacrifice. Make a sacrifice. Um, so you have an intimate, supportive relationship. No, pull away from that. Pull away from that for now. Um, so that you have made a sacrifice. So, so you are telling yourself, and I guess you're telling God, but you're also telling yourself that this thing that is coming is special and it is worth an extra effort. It is worth denying myself. It is worth breaking things down. Um, so that I may build them up with God. Maybe. I go there a little bit. And the other thing, and realizing that we are talking, this is largely men talking to men. And yes, I can, with some scholars help, go through some of, uh, of, of the Hebrew scriptures and show you where the authors may well be women um, or a woman. Um, but by and large, the tradition is these would be men talking to men. So... Um, so we, we're not going to say, don't go near um, your husband or your wife. We're just going to say, don't go near a woman. Um, it's a sort of, it, it communicates it to, 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 to men who are listening. Uh, and it reflects the fact that sometimes men only think about themselves. They're not looking at a broader picture. Um, so what we are being told here is, Refrain from your primary intimate relationship, which again can be sex, but it could also just be the kind of conversation you have as you watch the sun go down. Um, do not go near a woman. Now, maybe that's a euphemism saying, you know, don't touch them, don't have sex, but I'm going to take it literally and just say, no, no, distance yourself. Distance yourself from that primary intimate relationship because what you are about to experience is meant to be experienced intimately. I know that may be a reach, but I'm just wondering here. And that's what the text is inviting me to do. I wonder. So this little admonition here at the end, is that a way of making me wonder about the nature of my relationship with God? We do a lot of talking about God as, as Father. I mean, Jesus does it. Jesus calls, calls God Abba, um, Papa, Father. Um, so we do that father-son relationship. It fits the Trinity quite well. Um, but that's not the only kind of relationship we can have with God that would really narrow God down, wouldn't it? Um, so do we have an intimate relationship with God? Is your relationship with God like one that you would have with an intimate partner? be that male, female. Um, is it like that? Because I think this story is suggesting that that is part of our relationship with God, that there is a, that intimacy. And if for you, intimacy is only experienced or expressed in, 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 in sex, well, then we should talk a little bit about what intimate relationships look like. Uh, I have opinions. Um, but I, and I, so I think this is an invitation to consider how intimate are we with God? Is there that gentle trust? Is there that sense of letting go of space and time? Of knowing that somebody is for you, even when you don't deserve it? This is what I think of when I think of intimate relationships. You know, I think of the relationship I have with my father. I'm, I mean, at my age, I think of all the relationships I've had with my father, um, which is part of the limitation of using that image for God. So, so as a child, yes, my father was Superman and could do everything. Uh, I maybe was a little too reliant on him. Uh, but then that same person became the one that I rebelled against. Um, and much of who I am... Uh, well, some of it is is imitation of him, but some of it is to be sure not to imitate him. So that's not the God relationship. My father's much older now and therefore relies more on me and there are things that I worry about him doing without my help. That's not my relationship with God. But an intimate partner talks to me of, a, of an equality and of, a, as I say, a gentle trust. Um... There are times in my life that I've wanted to earn my father's respect. But in an intimate relationship, I have not wanted to earn 
my partner's respect. I have simply desired to do my best to make them happy. Prepare for the third day. Do not go near, near a woman. I think that this is let go of intimate relationship right now so that you might encounter God desiring that same intimacy, that you therefore might make that kind of connection. I think. I wonder. But of course, it's prefaced with don't touch the mountain until it's time or you're going to die. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Moses is told you have to set limits for the people all around. So tell them, be careful not to go up. You know, don't go up on the mountain or touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. Um, no hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether human or animal or human being, they shall not live. So if, if, if I had approached Mount Sinai and sort of stepped up on it, um, would I have been shot by a, a, an arrow from heaven? Um, wow. Wow. Uh, for me, this is very dramatic. Um, but God is given to drama uh, and likes to make, uh, you know, make, make things known emphatically. Um, but this for me is like, this is a special thing that's happening, and this is going to be a special place. So please treat it with reverence. And when I think about my faith, I come from a tradition that says, you don't have to dress up for church. Come just as you are. And I often do. Now, mind you, I wear robes, right? So a robes cover a multitude of sins. Um, I can wear jeans. I can wear t-shirts if I want to, because I have a collar that fits it over top, and I've got robes, and... Um, Am I too casual in my relationship with God? This is an invitation for to think about that. Um, should I be dressing up when I when I go to be with God? Um, thing is that I'm always with God. So is this a suggestion that there also should be special times, holy times, um, that are different than all of the other times? There are times when this appears almost untouchable. I don't know that I have to be threatened with death. I mean, if this is God's presence and God's presence is going to kill me, that's kind of scary. But we do have that relation with God, don't we? We talk about fear of the Lord. Um, when I think that that is to be overcome with awe. Um, is, is that what it is? Is that God's presence is overwhelming so overwhelming that it will it will kill us so god's saying yes yeah, so my presence is going to be here so don't you will be overwhelmed i think a lot of what's going to happen in the next uh, few chapters um will brush up against this and that is what is our relationship with god um what is respectful how do we see God with awe and yet also imagine God intimate with us? So God close and God far. How do we talk about God in terms of fear of God and the love of God? Are those two things compatible? And, and, and I think that that's what we're invited into um, with this all the time. Not that there's a definitive advance or saying, no, 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 God is always untouchable. And if you get too close to God, you're going to die. Um, I don't think that that's definitive. Um, the idea that we should relate to God very intimately, um, I don't know that that's the only way. Um, and I, but I think we're invited to consider that. So I will be thinking today about my relationship with God. I am going shortly to do, um, to do a funeral. And at that funeral, I will wear a collar and I will wear a suit. I would never think to show up at a funeral dressed in jeans and a t-shirt that says yay jesus like i just i wouldn't do that i might go to church that way because again i can put robes over um but i might you might come to see me in, in my church office on a wednesday and find that i am dressed very much like i am when i do these videos i'm not dressed up at all um but for a funeral i'm absolutely going to dress up so 
there do seem times that I do that. Now, do I dress up for God or do I dress up in respect of the deceased? What is my relationship with God? Is it intimate? Yes, it is. Does that intimacy breed a familiarity that makes me maybe take God for granted? And I have to say, yes, sometimes it can do that too. I become so intimate with God, so familiar with God, that I just immediately know that God's going to agree with me. Um, and then sometimes I might even stop listening to God because I just assume God's with me. And I will confess that I have done that with my intimate partner as well sometimes. Um, and so because I know that they will not hurt me, I sometimes forget that they can still challenge me. And maybe that's what this story is about, is finding that place, that place where there is intimacy, but also respect for the awesomeness. These people are going to hear God speak to Moses. They are going to be in the presence of God in a, in a, in a very real way, according to the story. So that could not be taken lightly. We can't just sort of brush that off. It's like, oh yeah, well, that, that, that's just a Tuesday. No, it's not. It's a special day. I'm going to stop there uh, and, and leave it with you to think about your relationship with God and how do we mix the, the awesome, oh my God, with the intimate. Oh my God. Um, where, how do we find that balance? Do we find that balance? Um, and I'm just going to offer a prayer. So let's see how that works. Let us pray. Loving God, you invite us into wonder and into question. You invite us into conversation and intimate relationship with you. And we cherish that. But God, we also recognize that you are deserving of awe and, and, and reverence. And so we sometimes struggle, God, trying to find that balance, that closeness that we experience in Jesus, but also that awesomeness that we experience in Jesus in the resurrection, in the Sermon on the Mount, in the ascension. God, help us to if not understand our relationship with you, help us to, to ground ourselves in our relationship with you. A relationship that, that is dynamic and so changes every day. God, let us never be afraid to wonder about how we are with you. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's it for me today. And I know it's kind of confusing, but I'm finding this an interesting question and I don't want to leave it alone. Um, so I'm going to leave it with you. There you go. And um, I hope to see you tomorrow. Until I do, please just know that you're blessed. God bless you. God, God sees you and God loves you. That's the intimacy. But God's love moves through you and that's pretty awesome and amazing. You matter. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.